All right, I know what you're thinking. You're probably feeling sorry for her right now. But let's not forget what she was going to do to those puppies. Today I'm going to show you how we created this gruesome Dalmatians of Revenge Cruella de Vil makeup. I got these encapsulated silicon pieces from Prosthetic Renaissance and they're these amazing dog bite prosthetics to the face and I wasn't sure how I could use them in a full Halloween costume so I was browsing the wholesale Halloween costumes website and I saw the Cruella de Vil costume and I went you know what that's it we're gonna do this. Then my friend Mark also known as Powder came over and he helped me to apply this and he added so many beautiful details it would not have looked anywhere near as cool if he hadn't have helped me with this. And my friend Dan Zeppelin helped us film this, so all of the beautiful handheld shots and close-ups and all that will be Dan's work. So I had a lot of help to bring this to life, which is really awesome. I love collaborating with people, so many thanks to Dan Zeppelin. Thank you to Mark for all of his help, and thank you to Prosthetic Renaissance and to Wholesale Halloween Costumes for sending me over the prosthetics and the costumes to help me create this disgustingly gory Halloween costume. We're going to be applying this makeup to my friend Leah, who volunteered her lovely face. So we started by prepping her face, so we cleaned it with witch hazel and we put a barrier foam down to protect it. Then we positioned the silicon pieces over her face to make sure it would fit. And then we put a layer of prosade on the back of the prosthetic and a layer of prosade on Leah's face. So we have the double contact adhesion, which will make it last a bit longer. And for pieces that are this big, I like putting adhesive on just a small part of it, gluing that part down first so that it's anchored and that we know that it's in the right position, and then slowly gluing down the rest of the prosthetic. I find that if I put glue over the whole thing and then try to glue it down, it can bend over, it can stick to itself, it can end up applied in the wrong place. So by gluing just a small amount at a time, you have a lot more control. Once we had successfully glued down this half of the prosthetic, we're going to start dissolving away the cat plastic edges. Now, prosthetic renaissance pieces are encapsulated in an acetone-based cat plastic, so we are using a cosmetic grade of acetone that I bought from the pharmacy to dissolve those edges. The edges are also really tight, which means you're not going to accidentally glue down too much cat plastic, but which also means you can accidentally dissolve away too much cat plastic. So to make sure we are getting very nice edges, we're using a very small brush dipped in the acetone and we're running it right along the edge of that cutting edge up against the flashing to dissolve away the cap plastic. As the cap plastic comes away and starts to hang loose, I like to cut it off with a pair of little scissors just to make sure it's not flapping around and getting in the way. And then once that flashing has been completely dissolved off, I like to get a little bit of acetone on a cotton tip and just make sure that all of those edges are nicely blended out. Now that we've finished one half of the face, we're going to be completing the same thing on the other half of the face, double contact adhesive, placing the piece against Leah's face, dissolving around the flashing, and then finishing it off with a cotton tip. I always like to go around the edges with a little bit of creamy prosade. I prefer to use a self-locking tweezer and a little bit of red stipple sponge ripped off, as this way I won't get any adhesive on my hands. And then I'll stipple the prosade all the way around that cat plastic edge. I find that it helps to disguise that cat plastic which can be quite shiny by giving this kind of textured skin like appearance over it rather than it being really smooth. And it also helps the prosthetic to last longer on the skin as it is making sure that outer edge is firmly glued down all the way around. Then because that prosade can be a little bit shiny and because the cat plastic can be a little bit shiny, I'm going to go over all of this with a matte sealer. I've been loving the Bluebird Matte Sealer, so I'm using that um, mixed in a cup that has been watered down, or I guess alcohol down, with a little bit of 99% alcohol just to thin it. I'm putting this over the prosade edges. I'm actually putting this over the whole prosthetic, just so the whole prosthetic will have the sealer, it will be mattified, and it will be a little bit easier to put down alcohol colors and to put blood down over the top of this. Now we're going to start coloring this piece. So we use alcohol activated palettes. I think we use mostly the Skin Illustrator Complexion palette and a little bit of the Light Flesh Tones palette as well. We started out with the pinks and the reds going back into the skin as everybody's skin has a whole heap of pinks and reds. I started by spattering this on with a chip brush which has been cut off, dipped into the alcohol. And we also used fan brushes, stippling brushes and little detailing brushes to get into all of those areas. I think the only other color that I used on Leah's skin was a cool tone from the Complexions palette as well. Now we're detailing the center of the wound with different pinks. I tend to not put too much red inside my wounds anymore as I know the blood is going to be doing that for me anyway. 
I also go back in with a cotton tip with isopropyl alcohol on it just to remove any extra reds which are going over that beautiful intrinsic colouring so those whites and yellows and pinks can come through as well. And this is our finished paint job before we put down any of the bloods. And you can see these silicon pieces have really beautiful edges if you put in the time and the patience to blend them out properly. Now we're going to put on the wig, so I put down a wig cap first and then this longer Cruella de Vil wig. And I'm also going to put a little bit of beauty makeup on Leah. I want it to be more of a distressed beauty makeup. So we start with an eye primer and then just some neutral brown shades on the lids. Then with my gel liner, I'm going to put it on quite messily and sloppily and make it look quite a bit messy. Then I put on mascara and then with my spoolie brush, which still has mascara on it, I'm going to dot mascara over the upper eyelid and then on the lower eyelid and down onto the cheek to simulate crying. And I'm also adding a little bit of water on a makeup brush just to further simulate that as being mascara tears. I also added a little bit of brow product to the brows to give them a tiny bit more definition. And we're going in with some red lipstick because Cruella de Vil obviously wears a beautiful red lipstick. But again, we want it to be quite messed up as if all of her face is so badly damaged around her lips, the dogs definitely would have ruined her makeup. I also added some scratches, again with the alcohol paints to Leah's forehead and also a little bit to her chest to simulate dog paw scratches. And before we applied the blood, we got her in position of how we wanted to film the intro so the blood would run realistically. We put down a clear piece of plastic over my tiles just in case the blood was going to stain the grout or anything like that. So we are going to be using a mix of different bloods. So I am using Fleet Street Dark and Robert Smith Silicon Flow Blood and also some PTM Red Drum Blood. We pretty much just completely fill that wound with blood to get it into all of the nooks and crannies and then go in with wet wipes and tissues and water just to take all of that blood back so we have the kind of traces of blood and remnants of blood without it just being a completely red mess with no discernible details. Just because that silicon prosthetic is really pretty and we do want people to be able to see all of the details and the skin edges and the flappy bits and everything. We also made a puppy paw print stamp by getting a microfiber towel and putting some sponges inside it and then using elastic bands to kind of tie it up to create those round paw prints. Then Mark dipped this into the blood and he put it around Leah's body and on Leah's body to simulate the puppies having stepped onto the blood and then walking away so it tells a little bit more of a story. And the poor thing was totally Mark's idea and I think it really sells it. I think it's a cool detail. Next I went in and made a pool of blood under Leah's head just because I thought that visual would be quite pretty and I wanted to use Rob Smith Silicon Flow Blood just because I really like the colour and it doesn't beat up so it will sit really nicely on that plastic tiling floor without it you know, beating up and looking quite fake. I also put blood over her costume and her hands just to continue it down a bit as though she had been trying to fight back. Cool, and then the final details or final checks was removing blood anywhere that we didn't want it if we thought it was a bit too bloody and then adding blood anywhere we thought needed some more until we were happy with the overall aesthetic of this piece. And then we stepped back and we had Leah do some acting and we were pretty freaked out by how disturbing this looked. So hopefully it's okay for you guys to be watching this and not being like, wow, Kiana and Powder have issues. And many thanks to Leah for being an absolute rock star of a model. I think she really sold it with her dead gaze and <laughs> coughing and splurting and you know sitting on a cold floor and not complaining once. Thanks for watching you guys. I will put all the links to what we used in the description box and a link to Powder's YouTube channel as well. You should definitely check him out if you like gory makeup tutorials. Hopefully you liked it. If you want to give this a share or a thumbs up or comment, any of those things are super appreciated. And if you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe here and then you'll be notified of when I put up new videos. There will be quite a few more Halloween looks coming up and I will see you guys very shortly. Alright, bye!